Welcome back to Block TV, where it is time for Chain Breakers. That's a place we meet the people whose work is making a difference in the crypto sphere. And today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Alex Adelman, co-founder and CEO of Lolly. It's an online shopping, hello there, <laughs> um, uh, online shopping who recently partnered with American grocery giant Safeway. That's huge if we're already talking about, about mass adoption and enables shoppers to receive um, their change in Bitcoin, in turn utilizing the cryptocurrency as both a means of exchange and a store of value. Alex, I want to thank you so much for coming on with us clearly after a long conversation, one of the spheres um, uh, star, so to speak, Anthony Pompliano, just saw you um, with the pomp on Periscope on his Twitter page. Uh, first of all, hello. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us. Lolly, uh, congratulations on Safeway. Before we talk about that, um, talk to me about Lolly. We looked at your website. We're going to bring it up in a second. There we go. And if we scroll down it, you have a mass amount of partners with, you know, we're talking brand names. We've got the Gap. We've got the Marriott there. Uh, we got Safeway. What are all those, you know, that, that almost looks like the page of Libra. What, what do all those agree to do with Lolly? Explain to me how this works. Yeah, so first off, thank you. Uh, that's a lot of hard work uh, that's gone into that. And, and it's not just me, it's my team. Uh, we have an incredible team we've been building uh, with the same company as our last company. So we've been working together uh, for about seven years now. And so this Lolly is new, uh, it's about a year old, um, but, but uh, we've been working together for a long time and we've built a lot of these relationships over the last seven years. So um, yeah, what we, what we do is we are a Bitcoin rewards company that makes it incredibly easy for people to earn Bitcoin when they shop online at these top merchants. So when you go to Walmart and you shop as you normally would, um, Walmart rewards you through us in Bitcoin uh, for making those purchases. Um, and yeah, we're you, I mean, to, I'm just specifying this. I mean, clearly because we're taping this on a day where Bitcoin is dancing around 12,000. I'm assuming in Satoshi's rather than Bitcoin, right? If I would, would be rewarded a Bitcoin uh, while going on to um, uh, Safeway, I'd be living in Safeway. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you get uh, our, our average percent back across all of our merchants is 7% back. So okay. you would you end up earning Satoshi's or fractions of a Bitcoin um, every time that you, you stack sats is what we call it. Okay, so that's how, and break down how it works exactly. Let's say, but they have to choose that option, I'm assuming, right? So, um, yeah, by downloading Lolly, you go to lolly.com, you, you download the Chrome extension, and you can start earning within about 30 seconds. And the way that it actually works is you, uh, we partner with the merchant. Uh, the merchant is paying for new users, so they, they want people to come to their site and so Walmart's incentivized to bring customers away from Amazon and to Walmart. So uh, they pay, I think, three and a half percent back in Bitcoin every time that you shop their site. And they have all the same stuff as Walmart or sorry, as, as Amazon. Yeah, and Amazon. so a lot of people cho are choosing to earn Bitcoin back instead of cash back um, or in addition to cash back with their credit card and their point system. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we're making it just really easy for people to shop. Uh, and, and earn Bitcoin uh, when they when they shop online. You explain the mechanism and clearly the people need to understand what Bitcoin is and all of us in the sphere who tout, you know, cryptocurrency, etc. We know it, but the mass population, or as I like to refer to her always, my 85 year old mother, how do you make her understand the benefit of earning Satoshis? How do you get people to choose that? So we, we call it, so we have a, a, one of our team members, uh, Shayna, uh, her, her grandma, her name's uh, or affectionately uh, Bubby. And so we internally, we call it Bitcoin for Bubby. Exactly. And it's like, how do we make it accessible for Bubby? Um, and so everything that we design, um, all of our education, uh, everything that we're doing around Bitcoin education and uh, creating an active Bitcoin rewards wallet for people and making it very simple uh, as a custodial solution, it's, it's all about making Bitcoin accessible. So, you know, Bubby is not going to go invest or go mine, but Bubby is going to go shop online or is going to, you know, shop at Walmart, going to take a trip using hotels.com. And so we're making it really accessible for everybody. So we have, you know, your 85 year old grandma, we have your, you know, 18 year old uh, college kid that, you know, is, is trying to stack sats on their groceries every week. Uh, it's, a, it's a wide range. Um, but we're, we're trying to get new people into Bitcoin. So some, one of the you know, interesting stats um, is just we have about 30% of our 
of our community, of our, of our users are female. Uh, and I think the most um, crypto projects, I think, like have less than 4%. So we are having really good early signals that we're bringing new people into Bitcoin. And a lot of that is like, you know, the messaging of the product, the simplicity of the product, all the education we're doing on our website, our blog, um, on our Twitter feed, everything to make Bitcoin accessible to everybody. No, and trust me, I think some men need that need that made accessible to them also, just like women. I had to. But, um, of course, of course. <laughs> but that said, I love Bitcoin for Bobby. You can add Bitcoin for Shoshi. Um, that's my mother. But, you know, Bitcoin for Bobby, that's great. But Bobby doesn't have a wallet. Where does she store the Satoshis? So Lolly is a custodial wallet. Um, so we're, we create a wallet for our users, and then they can either keep it in their Lolly wallet or they can transfer it out to a... Uh, custodial solution, non-custodial solution. Um, you know, my big belief is your Bitcoin is your Bitcoin, and you should be able to do whatever you want with it. So, um, yeah, people are able to do that. But for a lot of our users, they keep it in within Lolly uh, because they're just learning about it. And when I first learned about Bitcoin, like I didn't want to move it around; it was scary. So it's going to take time for people to, um, you know, move to non-custodial solutions. But it's our job to teach people about custodial versus non-custodial, about key management all that good stuff. So uh, I kind of look at Lolly being like, it serves the Bitcoin maximalists that want to stack more sats, but then it also serves uh, Bubby and people new to Bitcoin. Um, and that's, and we have to serve both parties. Now, I, look, I love the idea behind this. I'm posing tough questions um, uh, to see, you know, how this thing can be mass adopted. Um, I, does this need any type of regulation? I assume not, if you have Satoshis in your Lolly. I, I love, by the way, the nicknaming. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so we, we, right now, we are not considered by the United States as a money transmitter because it's a rebate. So people are not buying and selling Bitcoin on our platform. We're, they're earning You'll it. Get, exactly. So um, that, that's been a nice thing because we need very minimal KYC on the off ramp and we need no KYC on the on ramp. So people can sign up within 30 seconds they don't have to hook up their bank account they don't have to do anything uh that they that would like add this sort of risk or fear uh to it so we make i, I think we've made the easiest on-ramp into bitcoin um and and then then it's up, up to them you know what they do with that bitcoin uh and they can uh, move it to us dollars they can move it to uh to, uh, to their own bitcoin address they can move it to their favorite ex exchange it's really up to them now explain to me how you got all these amazing partners on. I know you have a great team. I know you've been working in this for seven years. You've got some major brand names that, you know, Libra would love to put on their roster. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, we've been working really hard to bring on these partners. And I think we built the right uh, business model um, in order to bring them on, on board. So one of the things I, I learned, uh, my last company was acquired by Ebates, the largest cashback company in the US. And so I got to work there, I got to understand that business model, and I got to look, like know a lot of these merchants um, over the last several years. So when I was concepting for Lolly and for Bitcoin Rewards as a distribution mechanism for Bitcoin, um, I, I was thinking a lot about how, like the, the mechanics and the incentive mechanisms for not just the consumer, because everybody wants free Bitcoin, everybody wants something for free and free. wants to earn something, but the merchants are also, they want new customers, they want new users. And they didn't realize, I think, in the early days how many people wanted Bitcoin. Now they're starting to see that they can actually generate revenue, more revenue, by attracting a new audience of Bitcoiners by uh, you know doing something that they were already going to do, which is give rewards, give cash back, but give it in the form of Bitcoin and attract a whole new group of users because now that they are a Bitcoin-friendly company. And... <laughs> Before they were not going to be, they were not incentivized to accept Bitcoin. Now they're incentivized to offer Bitcoin back to attract new users. And then what we're able to do with that is like once we're driving, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to these top merchants, I'm able to go to them and say, hey, what would it be like if you accepted Bitcoin, um, you know, using, same, you know, uh, using Lolly Wallet, and so pay with Bitcoin, pay with Lolly. Um, I think is is in the not so distant future. Let me ask you this. In the last um, uh, month or so since Libra's announcement, not launched, the announcement of its um, uh, expectancy, so to speak, President Donald Trump tweeting the word Bitcoin, um, uh, Mnuchin referencing that, um, uh, two hearings on the Hill, sorry, three hearings on the Hill. Have you seen a spike 
Um, now that Bitcoin is being mentioned slightly more, I mean, I think legislators and mainstream um, uh, markets understand that Bitcoin can't be banned, but have you seen a spike in people who are logging on to Lolly and utilizing it? Absolutely. We've grown exponentially. And when we launched, we launched in a bear market. So Bitcoin was around like $3,800, I think, were our, our first earners right. um, that they, they were earning at that amount. Now, you know, what are we, we're up to like 11 uh, K 12 K and uh, a lot of that has, we've seen just this massive influx in new users. Every single time that Bitcoin is being talked about good or bad, it's driving attention. Um, people are realizing that you can't stop Bitcoin, that you, that the masses are coming into it and, and more and more people want it. And so Libra, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I think Libra was one of the best things to happen to Bitcoin because it, it, it validated Bitcoin. It said we need a decentralized currency that's not that's not run by corporations. That that is uh, that is just you know it's just math. It, it like makes sense. Everybody can look at the source code and know that it just works and it cannot be broken. Which is so, anything. What you described just now is anything but Libra. I mean, at this point in time, people will argue that Libra is not decentralized. Um, exactly. Uh, but yeah. it taught people about Bitcoin because it said, okay, L Libra is hyper centralized. And these are all the things. And so it forced the government, uh, the U.S. government in particular, and, and many other governments around the world to study Libra and the pros and cons of it. And, and so I, I actually hope Libra launches. I, I really do. Um, I think it would be an incredible segue and almost a gateway into Bitcoin because it would put Libra um, in, you know, in, in the same um, sphere as Bitcoin. And when people start to invest in Libra as a mechanism for transacting globally, then they would also start to, to realize, hey, what's better than Libra? What's what's a mechanism that is less centralized? And that and then I think that segue is into Bitcoin. If if um, and so that's what I'm really excited about with with uh, Libra, with you know Calibra and Facebook, and really any stable coin. Uh, I think is a is a segue into Bitcoin. Now um, another question, because you know clearly you're a Bitcoin um, uh, enthusiast. I don't know if you're a maximalist. Um, but you're bullish on Bitcoin. The merchant and the consumer through Lolly seem to be benefiting both. What does Lolly get out of it? So we take a small percentage of every sale that we broker. So uh, our merchants pay us. Um, we we take a small percentage of that, and then we send the lion's share to our or to our user, um, sending the Bitcoin to their Lolly wallet. So it's a real business model. I mean, Ebates is a uh, you know, valued around $4 billion uh, internally at Rakuten. Um, you know, we, they were bought for a billion dollars. This is a, is a really strong business model. And that's important. Uh, you know, we need to make money. We need to build a, a sustainable business model. And, uh, and then the more we make, the more we can share with the consumer, uh, with the user, and the more Bitcoin we can distribute to people. So, um, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's this beautiful business model where everybody wins. The more, the more users we have, the more the higher percentage that we get from our merchants, and then the more that we can make, the more that our users can make. So it's this nice little flywheel. Uh, the more you share it, the more you uh, purchase, the more you earn, uh, and the higher amount you get back from our merchants. Um, utopian, to say the least. Um, you said that for seven years um, uh, with the same team of people, um, uh, you've been working on this business model on Lolly, and we, I'm assuming you were introduced to Bitcoin when? So I was introduced to Bitcoin about five, six years ago, and, and we were all building our last company together. Um, and, and yeah, so that we started that around seven, eight years ago. And um, and yeah, we, we found out about Bitcoin um, as a team. And I just we all sort of like latched onto it because we were deep in the payments world, deep in the e-commerce world. And naturally, you know, we were fascinated with this idea of the democratization of commerce with our, that was the mission of our last company. So the, one of the things that fascinated me with, with uh, Bitcoin is it has the democratization of commerce native to a currency. It gave everyone in the world the ability to learn about Bitcoin and to be connected by Bitcoin, um, to be connected by commerce. And, and that value proposition uh, was just really fascinating to me. Um, and then when we were at Ebates, we learned hey, this could be a really cool uh, way to distribute Bitcoin, which I think is Bitcoin's biggest problem right now is distribution. So when we parted ways with them, we saw Lolly as a rewards mechanism for distributing Bitcoin to more people. 
You know, I'm fascinating. I'm I was just asking because, I mean, it's a sphere of young people, and you clearly already sold um, uh, um, uh, one company, you've developed this one. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'm going to ask you I'm, what I ask everybody. For the love of God, how old are you? <laughs> 30 years old. Wow. Um, I'm a lot older than you. Um, and Alex. <laughs> Alex. Just remember. Exactly. Um, uh, Bitcoin for Bubby, as we say, loving that. Alex, ask, let me ask you this. Where do you see the future of Bitcoin? When you say that you're bullish, and clearly Bitcoin does not operate in a vacuum as decentralized as it is, we keep theorizing here in the midst of trade wars, US, China, you know, people are attributing the price to that. Libra has done some PR, reverse PR for Bitcoin, but it needs, it's a far way from being massively adopted. You know, and one can argue that, you know, mass adoption is not around the corner. Where do you see the sphere going in the next five years? Your uh, yeah, I think, I think we're in the really, really early days, which I, I think a lot of people have been hearing about Bitcoin and thought that in, the only way to get involved is to mine or to invest. Now there's so many ways that you can earn that you can get involved uh, without spending, you know, your money to get to get in. So I think it's, it's super early days. Uh, right now, I look at Bitcoin as an incredible store of value, and I see that for the foreseeable future. Um, I think it's going to take a lot to stable out and to function as a medium of exchange. And I think that in, in, in countries with more um, unstable currencies, it will function as a medium of exchange way sooner than it will in the U.S. The U.S. is the stable coin. The U.S. dollar is the stable coin that we have in the world right now. So I think it'll take a while before we get involved and we start using uh, Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. I want, you know, I, I'm positioning Lolly as the most active Bitcoin rewards wallet and the most active Bitcoin wallet, period. Um, and so as a, as a active wallet, when the time comes to be a medium of exchange, I am really excited for that future um, and I want to be there. Um, but I think we're, we're, we're a ways off. I mean, our, on our roadmap, um, we're functioning right now as a rewards wallet. But I think one thing you can anticipate is us getting into mobile, us giving people the ability to earn in more places, and then also giving people the ability to buy Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin, send Bitcoin to their friends, and, and evolve uh, with Bitcoin, uh, where I think people will more evolve from wanting to earn Bitcoin stack stats to sharing Bitcoin with more people and, and, and trading and selling and buying uh, more Bitcoin, and then functioning as a bank. So if we look at Bitcoin as the bank of the future, um, that's where I think people uh, serve as their own banks. And if that's the case, we function like our own banks. And so we look at lending, we look at uh, saving mechanisms. And when we start to look at that, that's when I think um, it gets really exciting because people can stack more sats and earn more Bitcoin um, by functioning as their own bank. And then people will start to spend it as more and more countries start to adopt it as a reserve currency or a reserve uh, you know, more of a store of value. And the more it stables out um, relative to other currencies, that's when I think more people will adopt it as a medium of exchange. Okay, that is clearly the utopian dream, I think, for every Bitcoin um, uh, evangelist. But first, as we said, Alex Edelman of Lolly, first Bitcoin for Bubby. Um, yes. one, yeah, once Bubby gets it, the rest of the world will get it. Alex Edelman of Lolly, as we said, thank you so much for being with us today on Chain Breakers. Um, uh, we will Block TV, we'll be right back. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter 